Hello. All right. Um, yeah, should we go? All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Gustav Johansson, and I run Jävligt Gott, which is Sweden's largest vegan food blog. I wonder, did I have a clicker anywhere? There it is. Yes, because I'm going to show something on that one. Uh, I believe very much in making it easy to do the right thing. For me, that was very much associated with, with when I became a vegetarian, I wanted to find ways to make the, the food that I loved, the classic Swedish uh, traditional food, uh, better. And that means uh, vegetarian. And nowadays, vegetarian food is an absolutely rice. It's everywhere and it's uh, so much easier to get a hold of than it was 10 years ago when I became a vegetarian and now that I'm a vegan. And this should be an absolutely positive thing. In the burger chains, you can have like this. It's absolutely over everywhere. Uh, there is so many options right now in grocery stores, in restaurants, and it's really booming. And it's making it so much easier for people to choose um, a sustainable option. And this should be really something that everybody, I think, should be rooting for. But unfortunately, that's not really the case. You see, there is such a thing as the European Parliament's Agricultural Committee, which is uh, a part of the European Parliament that decides and regulates the farming um, politics, so to say. Uh, and they have just passed a proposition where they want to ban the word burgers, sausages and steaks from being used on vegan and vegetarian products. You might think that this is a joke. Uh, but actually, it's not. It's really something that already exists in France, where they call the, uh, the burgers discs and the sausages for tubes. And there is actually a similar ban in effect already in the entire European Union on dairy products, where you can't call uh, oat milk milk. It's called beverage. Uh, and this, I think, is something that's really a problem, because this might be this actually is a vegan burger. It's absolutely perfect, it's absolutely available, and it's something that I think really helps people to choose a better option. So this new proposition, what's it really good for? Who benefits from this proposition? Well, the uh, France Social Democrat, uh, the French Social Democrat <laughs> Eric Andrieu, who proposed this uh, legislation, said it's in order to help consumers to be less confused in the grocery stores. If you pick a burger, then you're obviously expecting it to be meat, and if it's plant-based, you will be confused. And I'd say that's not the case. <laughs> uh, first of all, there is already tons of legislation that actually helps and pro prohibits people from saying that a vegan burger is a meat burger. It's really clearly marked that it's a vegan burger. And otherwise, I think, the thing that this really is going to do is that when you rebrand burgers and sausages and steaks into discs and tubes and patties, it's going to be even harder to find them and to choose the more sustainable option. So then is this in, the, in favor of the farmers? Is this something that's going to help the European farmers? And I don't really think so. Because in, if we just take one second and look at what the vegan options actually bring to the table, a uh, meat burger has 26 kilograms of emissions from one kilo of beef. Uh, that's 26 kilograms of uh, carbon dioxide per kilo product. But a vegan Beyond Burger, that's a good example too. They've actually done a life cycle analysis on their own burgers, and it's 2.2 kilos. That's a tenth of a, of a meat burger for a vegan burger. And that's just one of the effects on the climate that it has. But you can also see processed meats, especially like sausages and burgers and smoked uh, products, has a clear WHO, the World Health Organization, uh, shows it's a real clear uh, connection between that and bowel cancer. And there's also the, produ uh, the, produ the production of meat products has a huge connection to deforestation and mass extinction of animals around the globe. So is this really something that uh, the European farmers would win by? I don't think so. Uh, the thing that makes this really such a big problem uh, is that the European 
uh, agricultural policy, the European, it's <laughs> the common agricultural policies of the European uh, Parliament is called CAP. Uh, regulates huge subsidies and huge regulations that impact European farmers or all over Europe. French, French, farm, French farmers, Swedish farmers and so on. And what they regulate impacts our daily food, our grocery stores hugely. And when they say that the food that we love should be uh, meat, they're also saying that European farmers should not be able to, uh, should not be helped into rather facing the climate change rather than cementing old traditional ways. So the thing is, no one wins from ignoring that, clim that meat has an impact on climate. Not the farmers. This, for example, is a Swedish farmer called Adam Arneson, which collaborates with Oatly, uh, which you, I think you all know, in trying to find ways for Swedish farmers to be part of taking steps towards being the producers of the new vegan food, instead of saying that we only can produce meat. And this is the kind of things that the European uh, Parliament, with their cap politics, should enforce. They should help farmers to take a step towards being more sustainable, rather than cementing them in producing meat. Because I'd say, Banning and regulating the word vegan burgers is more or less like banning the electric car. You're just saying that in order to, uh, to support Volkswagen, we should ignore the fact that electric cars is becoming a thing. And I think they're doing the exactly the same thing here. Because saying that burgers can't be vegan is saying that burgers can't be sustainable. And that's really something that's a big problem because the thing we need to do is to find ways to make the food that we love better instead of having to learn, teach people how to learn something else and then leave all the traditional food behind us. That's really not going to make the transition into a more sustainable diet faster or more effective. We really need to update our food culture rather than to replace it. I think if you take the Italian people, for example, and say that you can't eat carbonara anymore, they would say like, all right, then we're not part of this. But if I'd say you can make the carbonara vegan, you can make the salsiccia vegan, you can make the burgers vegan, then I think we really have an opportunity to help people transition into sustainable foods faster. And if the European Parliament, instead of trying to regulate and cement things into the past, help us uh, take and transition into the future by saying that they should use the cap to help farmers be part of this solution, rather than ignoring it, then we have a possibility. And to do this, we're launching the campaign, Save the Veggie Burger, hashtag Save the Veggie Burger, where you can be part to, of actually, for the European election, to bring up these questions and help put a focus on how the European Parliament's agricultural politics actually are affecting our abilities to eat sustainable now in very concrete ways today. And the good thing about this is that the, we have an election coming up because the thing that has been put front forward today is a propos proposition for, uh, to the Agricultural Committee. It's not a ready and finalized deal, it's a proposition. And it's going to be lifted up into the parliament after the election, which is really good because with the election, we have the possibility to re-elect and to put focus on every one of our candidates from the entire EU and lift them up and say, are you going to say no to this stupid suggestion and instead lift up uh, uh, ways to use the cap to help European farmers to take sustainability further on. So call on your candidates to take stand on this, on this question, uh, agree to our campaign and help share it so that more people around Europe can be part of this movement to both save the veggie burger, but also put a finger on how important the European agricultural politics and what a possibility it is with vegan food if we're really actually allowing ourselves to see that our food culture can 
up, be upgraded rather than having to be outdated when we say that the vegan burgers are no more. So that's it for me. Together we are the solution. We can save the veggie burger and I hope you will join the campaign today at uh, we are, uh, we don't have time .org. Thank you very much.